Even back in the era he raced in, Jack Miller was an obscure name in IndyCar circles. That obscurity is really cranked up to 11 nowadays, 23 years after his career came to an end. Even the people that do talk about him aren't kind to say the least, and I don't think this video will really help that. But the way I see it, honesty is the best policy, and I don't want to blow smoke up people's rear ends. In the 1996-97 Indy Racing League season, Jack Miller's results made it seem like he was doomed from the start, and today I want to take a head first dive and see why that's the case. Today I tell the story of Jack Miller's cursed 1996-97 IndyCar season. As the Indy Racing League struggled to fill fields, Miller was brought to the IRL, despite not really being a hot commodity by any means. Most teams look for fast, young drivers with a background of success, and Jack Miller really didn't embody any of those things. Entering 1997, Miller had been in Indy Lights on essentially a full-time basis since 1993, where he had never led a lap and only finished on the lead lap four times. It also doesn't help that he would make his IRL debut at the age of 35, which is pretty old for a rookie, and I haven't even mentioned the more intricate details of the year. So at this point, some of you may be wondering what the deal was with this being the 1996-97 season. Well, the Indy Racing League was originally meant to end every season with the Indy 500. They did this for the first season, but for the second season, they did things differently. The first two races of the season in New Hampshire and Vegas were held in late 1996, with the next eight races being in 97. Jack Miller would compete in those aforementioned eight races in 97 for Arizona Motorsports driving the number 40 car, replacing Marco Greco who drove in the two races races in 96. Considering Miller's background, expectations weren't high, but they weren't at the bottom of the barrel either. But the year ahead would be at the bottom of the barrel, as you will soon find out. Race number three of the season and the first of 1997 would see Jack Miller make his debut at the Walt Disney World Speedway, and at the gate he had his best result of the year. I mean, it still wasn't a good race, but he gotta take the best out of stuff in life. During practice, Miller had little to no track time thanks to field-wide issues with the Infinity engines. Through all of the practice sessions, he ran only 11 laps, and had a fastest lap at a brisk 84 miles an hour. Thanks to the low running in practice, none of the Infinity-powered cars were allowed to qualify. As such, Miller would start the race second to last and 18th and would make it just 85 laps into the race proper before suspension damage ended his day. Miller would be classed in 15th, and the fact that this was his best race of the season is pretty sad. The engine issues continued in Phoenix, where messed up bearings plagued the Infinities. However, Miller would actually set a qualifying time this week, being about 12 miles an hour slower than pole sitter Tony Stewart. Now that sounds pretty bad on paper, but in this era of the IRL, the field was spread out quite significantly. I mean, Miller's performance still wasn't ideal, but his 18th place start wasn't horrible either. Matters race day, however, were pretty bad, as a fuel pickup problem ended Miller's day only 33 laps in, leaving him in 20th. Up next was the Indy 500, and thankfully for Jack, qualifying for the race wasn't a concern. The 25-8 rule, which guaranteed spots for the top 25 cars and IRL points, guaranteed Miller a spot in the field. This was a thin silver lining from a pretty rough month. It started off with Miller's engine blowing up during rookie orientation on May the 4th, meaning that Miller won't officially pass his rookie orientation until practice concluded on May the 9th. He would eventually start in the middle of row 6, and after nearly spinning on the parade laps, he would crash on lap 138. He was 7 laps down at the time, and would be classed in 20th. For IndyCar's first visit to Texas, it was same dance, different song for Miller. He'd qualify 19th of 26 cars in the field. Honestly, not bad. But as quickly as things looked somewhat promising, they shot back down to earth as electrical issues ended his day 24 laps in. So we're halfway through the season now, and so far the farthest Jack has gone into a race is 130 of 200 laps, or around 65.5% at the Indy 500. But in Pikes Peak, he would actually get closer to the finish. But much like Indy, Pikes Peak would also end in a crash as he hit the wall in turn 4. Things looked promising at Charlotte at first, as he showed more competitiveness than he had through most of the season to this point. But as usual, more mechanical issues would leave this weekend with a blemish. Handling issues would plague Jack's first trip to New Hampshire, with Miller skipping qualifying because of it, and retiring from the race with handling troubles as well. And to round the year off in Las Vegas, Miller would be the most competitive he had been all year, but for one last time, Miller would retire. This time after collecting debris in an 
an accident and damaging his car beyond repair. This is a first in the series because in 8 races in 1997, Jack Miller won't finish a single time. And what sucks is most of these weren't even his fault. He only crashed twice this year, with the other 6 races being down to mechanical issues or issues out of his control. Sure, Jack didn't show a lot of speed this year either, but really what dragged the season down was the fact that he didn't finish a single time. With a best classification of 15th and not a single race where he made it past 3 quarters distance, Jack Miller's 1997 season was filled to the brim with sheer misfortune. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.